So our spiritual practice for today can be stated in words directly quoted from Sir John Templeton when he said, experiment with the meaning of life. Experiment with the meaning of life. Um, that's, that sounds great. How do you do it? Uh, how do we experiment with the meaning of life? Um, abstractly stated, uh, it, it might seem like even a non-instruction, but actually it's, it's a pretty profound instruction. You know, if we, if we were to change our understanding of life, we change our reality. If we, if say that we're, we're stuck in a, in a routine and we just vary the routine a little bit, it opens up, it opens us up to new possibilities and new creative energy can begin to flow through us. There's a, there's a story uh, I like to tell, uh, a familiar story, and perhaps uh, many introduction to religion uh, classes, relig world religions classes, this story comes up, but it's a story from Zhuangzi, the, the Chinese philosopher, one of his uh, more famous stories. And um, he tells the story about how uh, one day uh, he awakened and uh, he remarked to a friend that he had just been dreaming that he was a butterfly. He was flitting about enjoying being a butterfly. And he didn't know that he was Zhuangzi. He had no knowledge of his Zhuangzi existence as that butterfly. And so now that he was awake, um, he, it occurred to him that now I'm Zhuangzi and then I was a butterfly. I wonder which is actually the truth. Am I the butterfly dreaming that I'm Zhuangzi or am I now Zhuangzi remembering this dream of being a butterfly? Which one am I really? So not knowing uh, if, I'm, if this is my true self or if my dream self is actually uh, the reality is a way of calling into question what we take as reality, the so-called real world. That whole concept of the real world is so relative, it's so local. Most of us have probably had the experience of altering our sense of reality just by getting on a plane. We get on a plane and we're in one time zone. We sit on the plane, we, we, we listen to our, our, our device, we read, and depending upon how many time zones we go, so we get out of the plane. It, well, it's getting less like that, but when we get out of the plane, we get away from the airport, maybe we get away from the, the big city and the international hotels, and we find ourselves in a completely different place. We find ourselves in a place where the customs are, are, are different, the languages are different, and even though English is so global these days, it doesn't take long to find oneself in a place where the languages are different, the divinities are different, the foods are different, the colors are different. Um, and so um, for John, for Sir John Templeton, this a practice of, uh, of um, experimenting with the meaning of life uh, is a practice of what he calls progressive minds. New discoveries, he, he, uh, he says, come mainly from progressive minds. Now, somewhere along the way, as I was reading through uh, Sir John's books and about him, uh, it becomes pretty clear that in, in, in matters political and uh, he was pretty conservative. And at one point he even said, generally speaking, uh, these kinds of ideas don't come from conservatives. And so, in, but he was in many ways a very traditional person. And yet, because he also had this humble approach, this humility approach, he was open to new ideas. He was willing to try something new. And in that sense, he also had a quite progressive mind. Um, and he, he expressed this also in a different way. How do you change your, your reality? How do you um, vary your relationship to, uh, to what is real? He said, make an inner, commit, an inner commitment to establish a new relationship with truth. Make an inner commitment to establish a new relationship with truth. Um, and so I, that's our practice for today. That's the buildup to our practice. And what I would like then is to suggest how we might go about doing that. Um, so um, this is not necessarily a... A, a close your eyes and sit under the Bodhi tree type meditation. This is a reflective meditation. Um, and uh, in my own uh, life, I derive a great deal of meaning from my, from my occupation, from being a professor and from dealing with words and talking to others about what I'm interested in. 
um, and being able to read and to think, uh, to engage these great spirits and great minds in human history, that's very important to me. But let me uh, vary uh, my relationship uh, to the meaning of life. Let me experiment with it by suddenly imagining something different. Let me imagine that I'm suddenly living without language in a forest alone. How would my relationship to life change if I suddenly were without my books and without my, uh, without my intellectual tools? Would I still categorize things and offer theories as to how things got here, or would I just be? Would I just allow myself to take in the fullness of my experience without dividing it up? Could I live a, a simpler life, a life that wasn't bound up with, with evaluations and judgments? Would I reduce the discomfort and dissatisfaction in my life if I could actually learn how to unburden myself of many of these preconceptions and judgments that I take to be the real world or to be the real criteria of what truth uh, is? How would it be to be free of them? Well, um, this idea is certainly at the heart of many uh, religious traditions. Um, we find in the Gospel of Thomas, not, not the Gospel of Matthew or the Gospel of, of Mark, Luke, or John, but the, the Gospel of Thomas. It's sometimes called a Gnostic Gospel. can talk about that on another occasion. But in the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus uh, says, But I have said that whoever among you becomes a child will recognize the Father's imperial rule and become greater than John. So the basic idea here is, is to become a child, um, and without becoming childlike, we cannot actually attain to the higher levels of spiritual insight. In the Upanishads, um, a, a figure there, uh, um, a central a teacher, writes, therefore, a br on, on one translation, Therefore, a Brahmin should stop being a, a scholar and try to live like a child. So we see that there's a common theme here, to live like a child. Um, what, what could that mean? Does that mean to actually live like, like, a, like a baby? No, it's a metaphor. Clearly, it means to try to live without our rigid uh, set of categories, or maybe they're a little more flexible to put them to the side, to try to live without them. And what happens then, and this, now this is where this starts to become an actual spiritual practice, when I put aside my judgments, when I put aside my thoughts, when I put aside my concerns, you see this is part of what meditators do, then I begin to experience what is or being apart from those filters from those reducing valves, from that which makes me incapable of seeing what is unless I first have processed it through my wants, through my dislikes, and through what is I see as important. Um, so uh, this, uh, this was a teaching uh, that was taught by a, a Hindu sage. His name is Ramana Maharshi. Um, and his basic spiritual practice was to question everything that arises in our consciousness and ask to whom this is occurring. So right now I I'm, I'm have this experience, I'm standing speaking to you, but who is the I who is standing speaking to you? Is it the Kenneth Rose, the Ken Rose with my particular biography and history? Is it the Ken Rose who this morning had this or that experience? Who is it that's having this experience? You say, well, you're having it. I'm certainly not having it. Well, but who is it that's having your experience and is having my experience? What is that level of consciousness? That level of consciousness is where the boundaries, the barriers between you and me, between self and other, between God and world, between the divine and world, they dissolve. And what's left is the brightness that Sir John was talking about. What's left is this radiant background awareness. In Hinduism, it's called Atman or Brahman. Uh, in Meister Eckhart referred to it as Gottheit. We can refer to it as the Absolute. And there are many other names well, I'll bring up when I talk about other religious traditions. This is that place from which one can, figuratively speaking, live like a child, free of the 
pre preconceptions, preoccupations of the busy adult mind.